cons, but I wouldn't change adopting seniors for the for the for the world. I love I love the seniors. Yeah, because I think also there is you know they they're so much forgotten a lot of times yeah. right like people always go for the young ones and the the puppies and you know yeah. where do you agree angela is that uh oh definitely um i you're definitely right that people tend to go for puppies for a lot of different reasons they're so cute and cuddly and um and a lot of people think that puppies that younger dogs and puppies because they don't have a lot of baggage that comes with them that they're going to be easier. So one of the fears that a lot of people have with older dogs, shelter dogs, rescue dogs is, well, what's their background like? Mm -hmm. And um, and then the belief too that, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, which is so not true. <laughs> but um, a lot, that's kind of a stigma that a lot of the older dogs have or shelter dogs. Um, but the, like Jason said, the beautiful thing with, with seniors, I mean, there's so many awesome things about senior dogs. Um, they're, they're so, grateful and they're easy in a lot of ways um they're they don't require as much uh activity <laughs> which can be really good for some people um they do have you know they often end up having more medical issues but your puppy will too your puppy's going to grow up um and just because you get a puppy doesn't mean that you don't that they're going to grow up to be super easy and well behaved either i think that's a common misconception that well if i've had this dog since you know he or she was a baby they're going to grow up quote unquote right and mm -hmm. they're going to you know they're never going to make mistakes and we see on the training side we see a lot of that people will come in um when their dogs you know two three four five years old um and they'll talk you know well we don't know what happened something just switched one day and they started you know they tried to attack us or they went after a dog or and but they don't understand that it was them <laughs> that mm. was always us it's always the humans that make the mistakes in some in some shape way or form dogs are always trying to tell us what's going on how they're thinking you know what they're thinking how they're feeling regardless of age um but i think a lot of people when they get a puppy they have that very very incorrect belief that this puppy is going to grow up and be you know however i want him or her to be mm -hmm. you've got to put in the work for that um, and senior dogs, they are not lost causes by any means. Um, doesn't matter what their background is. Dogs are animals, really, <laughs> are so adaptable. And dogs are products of their current environment more so than anything else. You can take, I mean, think of all the dogs that are pulled from dog fighting rings and how many of those dogs who grew up knowing nothing but, you know, pain and fighting and, you know, mean people. And then you take them out of that environment, give them a little bit of time to decompress, and they're amazing with kids, with other animals, you know, with families. And so it's having a senior dog, having a shelter dog, it doesn't matter if you know their background or not. It, what matters is what you can do with them in, in your home, the environment that you provide, the stimulation, the training, the, uh, the love and patience that you provide them. And senior dogs are, are great if you want for the most part, kind of low key, like Jason was saying, where you just want lots of cuddles and you yeah. know, a nice little evening stroll here and there. <laughs> Much well, better than getting a six month old Siberian Husky, for example, if you're not <laughs> super active. <laughs> well, I remember Jason saying uh, in his last podcast, Jason, you mentioned uh, when I interviewed, interviewed you last time, you were really like, yeah, it's also your lifestyle, you know, like if that's yeah. your lifestyle and it, it just works for you. Remember, you, I think you said something like, yeah, we like sitting on the couch and cuddling with our dogs. And, yeah. You yeah. Know. yeah. And, and, and they can, you know, like Mac has gone camping with us, right? He's traveled with us. So it's not like they're, they're sedentary beings who, you know, of course, when they get older, you don't want to take them camping or for road trips that are, you know, too long and maybe too arduous for them. Um, but yeah, it's really, it, it's about, you know, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a dog who you can play fetch with or who you can go on, you know, three, four, five mile runs with, you know, or are you looking for a dog who just wants to be your best friend and like idolizes you and sits next to you and, you know, is for the most part, just hanging. And then yeah. that's what we, we really love and appreciate um, about them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it may be a little bit more fleeting, but it's, it's powerful and, and, and the love is definitely felt. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and and that's something like this might be a difficult question to ask, but it's something that I've been I've been thinking a lot about because uh Sparky, my my fella, is um is 13 now and I, I'm I'm just 
terrified every day like okay you know i know he's 13 i know he's getting older like because i can also tell and i did have sparky since he was young um and you can kind of t- i think sometimes he forgets that he's old <laughs> you know it's like yeah, yeah. Sparky, yeah, you can't do that jump anymore. I'll help you. Oh, you know? I know that. I you know, know that. Kind yeah. of thing. Um, but is it, and, and this is something that I, I'd like to ask you both, because I feel it's a sort of, you know, taboo subject, but I think like it's really important to give people some support and some advice here as well. Like, can you prepare yourself for the day that your dog will die? Or can you somehow, like, I, I think you're never really ready, but is there anything that we can kind of give people as a, as some kind of advice or something from your personal experience, of course you, you lost uh, Bobbins last year and um, he's still with us anyway, but you know, like how, how was that experience for you? If, if you don't mind me asking, cause it's, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, it, when Gibson passed, it was a really tough, tough experience because it was, it was over a series of months. Um, he had really, really bad chronic stomach issues that, you know, you're, Regular vets couldn't figure out, holistic vets couldn't figure it out. Um, we just didn't have any answers. So it was really, really tough to kind of see him, you know, to be honest with you, withering away. He, he lost mm-hmm. a lot of weight. He was extremely lethargic. Um, it was really, really tough. But, you know, he, I think especially when you adopt, you just know that the, the, like, the best years of their life mm-hmm. or even months or days were with you. And dogs live in the moment. They don't as much, you know, they don't remember the past. They don't project into the future. And that's the beautiful thing about dogs is they live in the moment. So, you know, he's not, when it was his time to go, he wasn't thinking of all the horrible things that happened to him. You know, he was just looking at me and Michalina and he was laying next to Mac, our dog. And, you know, it was as horrible as it was, it was a beautiful thing. You know, we had a vet come to the house and it was done, you know, where he would be happy and safe and, you know, feel relaxed. And, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so you, you can never really prepare yourself, but you can, you can kind of stop being a human for a second. And just, if you can just think like a dog and just be Mm -hmm. in the moment and realize like how beautiful it is that he made it here instead of passing away in a shelter or, passing away in a in the backyard or some backwoods you know it's a it is still a beautiful thing yeah and i think it's really beautiful what you're saying as well about him looking at you and not thinking about the horrible years he's had but really because as a human being like i remember because i also got very attached to your dog <laughs> <laughs> as you know um big fan and um and even i was so upset and, and the first thing i said to Miguel, like yeah this dog and then all these years and he was on the street and and, and and only now he was a dog you know like only he's only been with them for a few years and it's yeah. the first thing that comes up to up in our hearts that's the first thing we think about and it's so beautiful that of course for him that's different and i, I think yeah. was, and the way i think that was it, yeah that was something that he really showed me it was you know like when he came into my life, you know, like he had, he had gone through so much. And at the time, you know, I was working a job I didn't like. I, you know, I had so much just, I was just angry with life. And then mm. he comes along and he just shows me like, you got nothing. You got nothing to be upset about, you know? And he, his just ability to, and, and that's what the dogs do. And that's what animals do. They just show us an incredible, incredible ability just stop feeling they don't feel sorry for themselves Mm -hmm. you know they don't they just live in the moment they they give as much love as they can and and i think we should all aspire to to be like that Mm -hmm. angela do you have any other because um how, how do you feel about you know is there anything that you could give people from your from your experience i'm sure you've had some experience unfortunately of of having to say goodbye to your friends yeah um well it's just like losing any loved one human or non-human even preparing yourself doesn't prepare you Mm -hmm. um and know that it can happen at any time i had uh, my very first two dogs as an adult um one passed away she was only about five and a half years old had no pre like prior health issues or anything like that and passed away very suddenly um, within 24 hours of us finding out something happened. So there was no preparation. We had no idea anything was going on. Um, and we lost her like, like that. It was, she was just gone. 
um, her buddy that we had at the same time, he was five and a half um, and was diagnosed, again, no health problems otherwise, but he was diagnosed with congestive heart failure at a very young age. So we had, um, that's actually when I adopted Nala, uh, mm. and, and it really, it really, she gave him life. So we were told like probably six months or so with him after his diagnosis, um, Nala gave him a year and a half. So I had a year and a half to prepare myself and I tried, I thought I, I thought I was like, okay, I, you know, it was really, really hard with my other dog, Dana. Um, I had no way to prepare, um, with midnight, I'm going to prepare. I'm going to do everything I possibly can to be ready for the day. I wasn't. There was, there was no preparing for it. I, I, I tried. And I thought a lot about that afterwards. Like, is there a, a better way? Like, uh, what would I prefer if I, if I got to choose for any of my loved ones? Would I rather not know when it happened suddenly? Because mm -hmm. then you're not, you're not thinking of that. You know, you're kind of, you kind of forget. Um, you're, you have that kind of invincibility, like nothing will ever happen. Um, would I rather live like that up until the last moment? Or would I rather fret and worry and have good days and bad days um, while I have, you know, a year and a half, two years to prepare for it. Um, there are pros and cons to both, but there's really no way to prepare for losing a loved one. Mm -hmm. um, you will always go through your stages of grief, whatever those may be, whatever those look like for you. So I think the best thing to do is kind of what you and Jason just talked about is live each day like a dog <laughs> try to be like them um they are reading your energy your body language all of your they're reading your emotions if you are upset you're gonna your dog's gonna be upset mm -hmm. if you're fearful your dog's gonna be afraid they're not they don't understand why you're upset they just know that you are upset so it's going to affect them yeah so if for no other reason uh, try to be strong and to be happy and to live each day to its fullest with your dog for your dog or for your animal, whatever, you know, whatever kind that you have. Um, and I think that's probably the, the only, the best way that you can do it is just be more like dogs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I, I think that that's definitely something. I mean, for me also, it's just simple things like I know Sparky is older and, you know, when we moved, we, we moved, you know, from one place to the other here in Amsterdam, I just, you know, went into the vet and, you know, introduced myself and introduced Sparky and put the vet numbers in my phone, you know, just because I'm always thinking like, what if something would happen? And, you know, I think these, these little things can, I mean, it even makes me a little bit more relaxed knowing, okay, I know that the vet's there. I know that they know me. I know that if anything would happen to him in the night or whatever, you know, I can, uh, but of course preparing is, is, um, I have definitely, yeah. I, th I have these thoughts all the time, but I, I think I really agree with what you're yeah. saying. You know? Yeah, that's, uh, the, that's the, the gift and the curse <laughs> of being a human, right? Is being able to project and being able to remember. And I mm -hmm. think, uh, yeah. you know, something that's, that's really helped me is, you know, you can go ahead and project, right? Project out and project that worst case scenario. You know, mm -hmm. if X, Y, Z happens, then this is what's going to happen. But once you know what the game plan is, just leave it behind yeah in the moment right yeah. because there's no reason to to rehash it and rehash it and rehash it so you know set up your plan understand how you would handle it but then don't ruminate on it right because yeah. that's, if i could go back you know there were days where you know towards the end when when bubs was really you know sick that i you know i, I continued to work part of the day you know and instead of just laying there, i wish i had just laid there with him like all day you know um and just really just had just been in the moment even more so you know yeah. make your plan and then and then spend as much time in the moment as you can and, and don't don't project those those things over and over again you know and i definitely think what you're both saying as well is like you know spend as much time as you can because that's definitely the i think i'm really having a hard time like everybody else but i'm really hating corona times of course like <laughs> many of us but i think that for me the one thing that I'm so grateful for is just being with Sparky 24 seven, you know, it's like, well, at least I have him around me all the time. And that would yeah. not have happened if it wasn't, you know, if we're working, I travel a lot normally. And yeah. so for that, I, I don't know. I really felt like, yeah, you know, this has been such a gift, you know, to be, and I think that that's the case for, for many people. So yeah. 
no, that's really, and, and something, Jason, something that I was also wondering with you, like when you go to the schools and when you're, you're meeting up with these kids, 